Well, the best thing about cruising is just being able to, to travel on your own terms. Um, you know, it's uh, seeing different places and meeting different people. It's truly the people that we've met along this journey that have just been so incredible. Um, and definitely the vistas, my gosh, I definitely feel so fortunate. We're Jamie and Larry McCullough on board our Nordhaven 59 Coastal Pilot Independence. Uh, currently, we are at a little uh, beach called Santa Spac, uh, which is in Bahia de Concepcion. We're roughly 110 miles or so north of Loreto, Baja. And uh, we used to camp along here, and um, about 21 years ago, uh, we camped over at El Coyote, which is just another beach over. And um, we really love Baja and um, really wanted to have the boat down here and go cruising around with it. I uh, really became an, interested in the Nordhavens from uh, looking at the Passage Maker magazine for many years. And they came out with the coastal pilot model, and um, there were some articles about it in Passage Maker. And I knew that we wouldn't be crossing oceans. And I'd also owned a trawler um, for about three years, lived on it in San Francisco while I worked downtown San Francisco. And the speeds were a little slow, but the. The safety of the Nordhavens and being able to um, get up and get some speed when you really want it and um, knowing there was going to be a, a, a safely built boat, something that could take us in coastal passages where we could go up to a thousand miles, uh, maybe even farther with you know the slower speeds was something very appealing to us. So after months of trying to figure out a name for the boat, we had to do our Coast Guard documentation and we had about 24 hours to figure out a name. I had come up with, of course, a bunch of different names that were a little hard to understand when you get on the BHF. So Larry approached me with the name, Independence. And that's kind of what the boat means to us. It's Independence. Uh, right now, City in the Sea of Cortez and uh, been so many beautiful places. We thought about buying a boat and maybe just doing the Great Loop, but we also said, well, you know, let's just bring it back on its own bottom and um, go through the Panama Canal. So we had to find a boat that could uh, do the Great Loop and br be brought back on its own bottom, and um, the Coastal Pilot fit that perfectly. Buying the boat and having some goals was to, first off, get it ready for the Great Loop and then get ourselves ready for the Great Loop and getting used to handling the boat. Um, so we did some cruises down to the, um, Key Largo and Marathon, Florida, so, and then we went over to the Bahamas, and then um, it was getting to see America. Doing the Great Loop is really a neat neat trip because you go to the heartland of America and you see it old America. The history is absolutely amazing and it's right at our back door. People go to Europe and spend all sorts of time there and we have <coughs> absolutely amazing history here in America that most people will never see and you can do it on your boat. <laughs> 
Then we'd pull into a little town by three or four, do research maybe the night before on what that town was about, and just start walking around the town. And we met a lot of people that way, and we're actually in touch with quite a few of them still. And we went down to Marathon, so that was kind of our southern point or starting point for doing the loop. And then we, um, various times, were out in the ocean and then um, up the intercoastal waterway and Chesapeake Bay and then up to New York City, some time in New York City, and then about 120 miles up the Hudson River to Waterford, New York, was when we um, started the Erie Canal route. Going to all five Great Lakes, uh, Lake Superior, for just a short little visit and then um, down the Michigan western coastline to Chicago, spent great time in Chicago, about three days, and then to the Illinois River where we had the bridge that is the lowest clearance of 19 and a half feet, so we had one foot of clearance for that, and then we ended up down in the Mississippi, and then we took a left turn on the Ohio River, and then through various rivers, we ended up down in Mobile Bay, Alabama. And we crossed from uh, Carabelle, Florida, to and then Bradenton. we had an overnighter yeah. to... Um, Bradenton. Yeah, Bradenton, which is in the Tampa Bay area. And then um, we worked our way back down to Marathon and completed the loop. Well, we left Key West and we uh, uh, ended up in Isla Mujeres, a great little island. We had so much fun there. And then we headed south down to Puerto Aventura and we got to see Tulum and uh, Cabo oh, or Coba. Coba and the, uh, the old Mayan ruins. And then we headed down to Belize. We probably spent almost four weeks in Belize, had a nice time down there. Um, it was starting to uh, get a little nervous about COVID, and um, we thought we'd better make a run for the Panama Canal, and maybe the worst thing we would have to do would be to go to uh, the Panama Canal and haul the boat out. So we ended up at Bay Islands, Honduras, and we pulled in there, and the people said, okay, you have 24 hours to leave, or you're going to be here for a minimum of two weeks. And we stayed at a nice little resort where we had electricity, and so the two weeks didn't sound too bad, and it turned into six weeks. And then hurricane season was starting to approach, and um, we had nowhere to go. Central America was completely shut down. We decided we'd just take advantage and go to Bahamas. So we had my family, some of my family members come in and did an incredible trip to the Bahamas, which we really enjoyed. And we okay. probably spent, what, about three months out at the Bahamas. So we did more of the southern Bahamas because we'd already done the northern Bahamas. And then while we were out there, um, and I don't know if it was a little homesick or whatever, but we started thinking, you know, let's, uh, let's, take a look at shipping the boats. So we got a shipping date and we had the boat sent to La Paz and um, and we enjoyed cruising around La Paz. Of La Paz, some of the most amazing cruising grounds. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. The Sea of Cortez is so beautiful and the wildlife here is so incredible. Uh, we've snorkeled with sea lions, we've had um, hundreds sharks. of dolphins fighting for position off the bow of the boat. Wherever we've been, the people have been great. Um, going into little towns, and being out here in Mexico, and going into a little fishing village and anchoring there, and just the experiences. Yeah. You know, we had to step out of our comfort zone. Yes. Believe me, it was a big thing. I'm just saying, okay, we can go do this, and. Um, the boat has given us the independence to get away from the beaten path and, and be in places that we really love and enjoy.
there's been stressful times. Don't want to make it sound like it's been a piece of cake all the time. And uh, one thirty in the morning, and all of a sudden these winds come up out of nowhere. <laughs>